This tutorial describes how to perform any fluorescence-based assay from preferred cell systems. All assays that incorporate a fluorescence readout or endpoint are non-lytic or non-destructive. This means that the cells are not damaged during their procedure. It has the advantage that other downstream readouts such as flow cytometry and other fluorescent readouts can be used on the same cells. Even some luminescence assays can be employed using this type of fluorescent readout. When multiple endpoints can be used on the same sample, this is called multiplexing. All preferred cell system assays that use this fluorescence output measure the number of live cells in the culture. In other words, it's a viability assay. However, when cells proliferate or are inhibited from proliferation by cytotoxic agents, the amount of fluorescence produced changes proportionally. Therefore, the fluorescence readout can be used as a proliferation or cytotoxicity marker. The data obtained can be normalized by performing a cell dose response every time an assay is performed. This allows a better comparison between experiments. The assay uses a fluorescence plate reader with an excitation filter of 380 to 400 nanometers and an emission filter of 505 nanometers. Let's see how the fluorescence readout works. Live cells contain a protease that is both conserved and constitutive. This is what serves as a viability marker. The assay kit contains a cell permeant peptide substrate called glycyl phenylanilyl aminofluorocoumarin or GF-AFC for short. The GF-AFC substrate is dissolved in, a, in the buffer provided. The dissolved substrate is added to each culture well at 0.1 milliliters. The substrate enters the cell and is cleaved by the protease to generate a fluorescent signal that excites at 380 to 400 nanometers and emits at 505 nanometers. The amount of signal produced is directly proportional to the number of live cells present in the culture. When you open the assay kit box, you'll see that it contains nearly everything you need to culture the cells and measure the fluorescence. Some assay kits can be used on numerous cell types. In these cases, the investigator should use their own culture materials and protocols. However, in general, the assay kit contains a base medium, the GF-AFC substrate, substrate buffer, black sterile 96 well plates, and sterile adhesive foils that can keep unused wells sterile. You'll also need the following supplies and instruments cells if you're going to normalize the assay and sterile tubes to dilute, to dilute the cells for the cell dose response, single channel pipettes and sterile tips, a reagent reservoir, an eight channel pipette and tips, and a fluorescence plate reader equipped with filters for 380 to 400 nanometers and 505 nanometers. For this tutorial, it is assumed that the cells have been cultured for a specific period of time in the black sterile 96 well plate provided with the assay kit, because in this tutorial, only the procedure for processing the plate and measuring fluorescence is described. Make sure your fluorescence plate reader has the correct filters for excitation and emission. Also make sure that the instrument is adjusted to the correct gain. You will need to remove the base medium, substrate buffer and the GF AFC substrate from the assay kit in the freezer and thaw them at 37 degrees Celsius in a water bath. When the substrate has thawed, mix it by vortexing and centrifuge briefly to recover the complete volume. Transfer all of the substrate to the buffer container. 
This produces a twofold concentrated substrate solution. Mix thoroughly to dissolve. If the complete reagent is milky, this will, this will dissolve on further mixing. Remove the 96 well plate from the incubator and let it come to room temperature. As you see, we are using only six columns of the 96 well plate. The plate will now be covered with the sterile adhesive foil that was included with the kit so that the unused wells will remain sterile for later use. To do this, place the 96 well plate in a hood to keep the plate sterile. Remove the lid. Peel off the back of the foil and press the adhesive side onto the top of the plate. With a sharp knife or scalpel, the foil will be cut between the 6th and 7th column. The foil will then be removed from the first six columns of the plate, leaving the remainder of the plate sterile. The base medium has already been added to the first column. This will be the background. However, if you are using a medium containing serum, this should be used in place of the base medium, since serum contains substances that might produce a fluorescent signal. This background needs to be subtracted from the sample values. Pour the dissolved substrate into the reagent reservoir. Using a multi-channel pipette, the 8-channel pipette, dispense 0.1 milliliters of the dissolved substrate into each well and mix gently by pipetting, making sure no bubbles are produced. Transfer the plate back to the 37 degree incubator. The fluorescent signal will start to develop after about 30 minutes and should reach a maximum after three hours. Usually, a two-hour incubation is perfectly sufficient. You can remove the plate at any time to measure fluorescence to determine the optimum time for the cells being assayed. Don't forget to subtract, to subtract the background value from all of the sample values. Let's now take a look at how the assay is normalized. Since the method determines the number of live viable cells, the assay can be normalized by performing a cell dose response curve in parallel with the samples being measured. Always include a zero cell control. A typical cell dose response curve may include cell concentrations from 250 cells to 10,000 cells per well, each in 0.1 milliliters of total volume. The cell dose response will be fitted to a linear regression curve and the relative fluorescent units, or RFUs, obtained for the sample can then be interpolated as live cell concentrations. If this procedure is performed every time samples are assessed, it will be possible to compare results from well to well, plate to plate, and day to day. It should be pointed out that this is not the same as performing external standards and controls, as is the case with the ATP bioluminescence assays from preferred cell systems. As mentioned previously, the fluorescent substrate does not destroy the cells. This means that you can easily multiplex these assays with other fluorescence and even luminescence readouts. This multiplexing allows you to obtain significantly more data from a single sample than would otherwise be possible. Well, this concludes the tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us. We're here to help you.